Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Stephen's. It's lovely to see you in person again. Um, if you're here visiting or for the first time since we've started regathering again, I'll just give a little bit of instructions about what's different in our service. The most uh, significant thing is when you come for communion, um, we will only be doing the wafer, the bread, and not the wine. And uh, the priest will come here to the front and we'll have you come up at social distance um, in your party. And you'll just put your hands forward and she'll place the wafer in your hands. And then we ask you to go back to your seat by the outside aisle. And when you're at your seat, remove your mask and partake of the wafer. And then return your mask to its regular position, if you would. And then at the end of the service, we'll be um, dismissing people from the back row so that we can maintain social distancing on the way out of the church and not kind of congregate in the aisle. So apart from that, it's going to be our beautiful service that we so enjoy, and we're just really glad you're here to enjoy it with us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil, and make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant us, we beseech thee, that having this hope, we may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, he liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. First lesson from Joshua 24, 1 through 3. When Joshua God gathered all the tribes of Israel 
to Chizan, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah, and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the efforts and served other gods. Then it took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the God your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Ammonites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, the Ammonites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then you will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witness against yourself that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. And he said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made the covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinance for them at Shizan. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us recite the psalm listed in your bulletin in unison. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. Which he commanded them to teach their children that the generation to come might know and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. A reading from the Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be in, uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that they may not grieve as others who do have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so, through Jesus, God will bring him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by be will be will by no means proceed those who have died. For the Lord Himself is a cry of command, is the archangel call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, we will be sent from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise again, will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together, with them to meet the Lord in the air, so that we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamp and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Waiter. What about you? Are you a good waiter? 
Is there anyone here who feels like they're pretty good? Okay, you're just like me. Our gospel lesson today is about waiting. Ten bridesmaids are waiting at the bride's home and they're waiting for the groom to come. That sounds like a really strange practice to us, so I want to unpack that a little bit and give you a little history uh, behind ancient Jewish weddings. And as I'm talking through it, you can think back to some of the lessons that we've had before that involve weddings. Jesus talks about weddings a lot, and there's a good reason why. When a young man wanted to marry, and actually it wasn't usually the young man, it was usually his father, he would meet a potential bride's father first, and actually it's probably his father who would go and grow before him. And he'd ask for permission to marry the man's daughter. And if the father agreed to the match, then they would start a negotiating practice a price to be paid for the future bride. Now, brides weren't worth much. They didn't bring much to the party. But the father of the groom did pay quite a bit to make this match happen. When the fathers and the bridegroom agreed on a price and the groom had paid, the marriage covenant was established. And then the young man and the woman were regarded as future husband and wife. And to symbolize that relationship and the fact that a betrothal had been announced, the engaged bridegroom and the bride drank a cup of wine. And then after the marriage covenant was established, the groom <coughs> left his bride at her home and he returned to his father's house where he lived. And there he remained, separated from his bride. He never saw her, sometimes up to a year. During this period of separation, the groom prepared a place in his father's house where he would later bring his bride. And usually it was just a nook in a corner. And during the separation, the bride's family observed her for purity. In other words, she wasn't getting out of the house. She wasn't going shopping. There was going to be no chance that some young man would catch her attention. And her mother and her older sisters would help prepare her for what it means to take on the role of a wife and what it means to be able to go live in his household where she is not the queen of the house. His mother is. And at the end of that period of separation, the bridegroom came, usually at night, to take his bride to live with him. Now, the bride knew, sort of, that he was coming, but she didn't know when he was coming. So, how did she find out? Well, the groom, the best man, and the other male escorts, his relatives, left the groom's house with torches, and they processed to the home of the bride. His arrival was preceded by a shout, like we heard in the gospel lesson, announcing his departure from his home. And then those on the street, knowing that a groom was going to claim his bride, would begin to shout out, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Behold, the bridegroom comes. And after the groom received his bride, together with her female attendants, the enlarged wedding party returned to the groom's father's house, where the wedding guests had assembled. Shortly after their arrival, the bride and the groom were escorted by the other members of the wedding party to the bridal chamber, also called the hoopah. And the wedding guests partied on, sometimes for days at a time. Now, that's some serious waiting. Women, can you imagine not knowing when your husband is coming for you? <laughs> Clearly in our gospel reading, Jesus is 
using the wedding simile to emphasize that we know, have no idea when the groom, Jesus, will return to begin the heavenly banquet. The bridesmaids are waiting, but some are not prepared. And because they are not prepared, they're going to find themselves locked out of the heavenly banquet. Jesus says we must wait. But he says we, all must, we also need to be prepared. So what does he mean when he says we need to be prepared? Go out and buy some oil for your lamps and buy some extra wicks? No, he doesn't mean that. He means that he has already taught us that <coughs> the kingdom of heaven is. He has taught us the two great commandments. He's taught us how we are to treat each other. He has taught us that we are to look after each other, to care for each other, and to nurture and support each other. We must wait with patience, and we cannot shirk our responsibilities as Christians. We must remain faithful to our commitment to Christ, even though the wait may be longer than we hope. Sometimes we think we have all the time in the world to repair damaged relationships or to change bad habits, to send notes of thanks, condolences, gratefulness. Sometimes we think we can put off trying to deepen our relationship with God, put off spending more time with our children, or reaching out to people in need. And we all know how our procrastination works. But when we do that, we are being foolish bridesmaids. When we choose to put off or to ignore, we are not being faithful to our commitment to Christ. The next time you find yourself waiting, waiting for traffic to break or light to change, when you find yourself waiting in line or waiting for your dentist, wherever you are, when you realize you are waiting, use this time to do a reality check on your faithfulness to Christ. What can you do while you are waiting to hasten the coming of the kingdom of God? Are you being Christ? hand in the world. Amen. begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the full state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our
our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Mary and Bruce, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here, present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. We truly <coughs> we beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially our President Donald and our President-elect Joe, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with thy substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor, guide, Kim, Martha, Jean, Dan, Teresa, John, Marie, Bill, Paige, Cindy, Phyllis, Stuart, Sandy, Alicia, Marcia, George, all those who are unable to work from home. Donald, our president. We pray also for Nancy, Marcia, Tara, all health care workers and volunteers, for Betty, Tanny, Darren, Ian, Bob, all who work in our jails and prisons, for Robert, Tori, for our Good Shepherd mission, for Gail, for Richard, Chris, Thomas, Joe, and the Shaw family, Michaela, Jackie, Jane, Joan, Donald, Colleen, Leslie, Linda, Jean, Joanna, Christy, Carol, Sue, and Gretchen. All those in this transitory life who may be in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. You may add your petitions at this time. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Stephen and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayer, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are sinning against you. God, glory to thee, for what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name.
I want to invite now anyone who has any announcements to come forward. Hello everyone, my name is Bill Thomas. I'm a member of your vestry. Uh, I'll give you a couple words today uh, about uh, stewardship. I know most people, when they think about stewardship, they think about uh, financial matters and managing assets and things of that sort. There's another type of stewardship, and that's family stewardship, or our church family stewardship. I guess you could say family stewardship tells who we are. I served two decades in the Marines. <clears throat> I was tasked with a lot of uh, uh, things. Some of those required uh, endurance, patience, and sacrifice. And I'm certain that uh, you can understand those. <clears throat> I had Marine early in the deployment who was struck with jaundice. So he had to be moved to a uh, Saudi hospital. And I, I checked on him as often as I could, uh, took care of his needs, and uh, uh, helped him however, and visited him as often as I could too. As we were poised on the Kuwaiti border, The stewardship of my family, my marine family, it took on a, a different meaning. It gave me a, a insight to what God had entrusted me with. And much just like in the church, as stewards, we must steward our time, our labor, our resources, and our spirit. And each of these stewards, stewardships, require creativity and being open to what God wants us to do. And I hope that you will use your time, your labor, and your creativity for St. Stephen's. Thank you. Just in case it's your first time back, I just wanted to announce once again that we're um, in the midst of our annual pledge drive. Um, Faithful generosity is our theme this year. We're just asking you to be prayerful um, about um, what God will be having you do um, with regard to your giving, your time, your talents, your resources in 2021. That might involve serving on vestry or being part of our search effort or um, jumping into altar guild or any other of our prayer ministries, brotherhood, etc. Um, we'll be collecting um, pledge cards on November 22nd, and we'll get those to you between now and then through the mail, and we'll have them available here at Churches of Home as well. So if you have any questions, um, please be sure to let us know on your way out. Okay? Any other announcements? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good thy vows unto the Most High.
in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again for in the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured to us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy my almighty goodness, thou say to bless and sanctify with thy holy word and spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, having received these, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy holy church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we 
we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive this precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, okay. Our Father, Lord in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let's pray. Almighty and ever living God, we must heartily thank thee that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The blessing of God the Father, the Son, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.